Hey friends, I'm August Weil. I work at Whitworth University in the Human Resource Office. I also get to chair the Sustainability Committee on campus. I'm excited today to talk to you about what Whitworth's doing on the sustainability front. First, let's define it. Sustainability is the presence of justice in an ecosystem building a resilient community. Second, Whitworth's making some real strides in the way that we're starting to offset our carbon inputs and the part that we're really going to highlight today is the great work of the grounds department and how they're starting this composting program with our wit worms. And I'm really excited to share that, but to do it, I'm going to need a little help from my friend Tyler. Hey, this is Tyler. Tyler, can you tell us a little bit about what the process looks like at Whitworth as we compost? Sure. So our, our grounds department has two types of compost programs. One is the thermal piles and the second is vermiculture. And we'll start with vermiculture now. So that whole process begins here in the Sodexo kitchen. The food preppers set aside their scraps for us in these buckets. About twice a week, I take that back to the grounds department and throw it through a wood chipper and get it ready for our worm bin. Let's head there now. Now we're at the shed behind facilities on campus where the rest of the food processing takes place. So we've got our food bin from Sodexo, and here's our wood chipper. So we process the food through here, creating a, for, a sort of food slop that we feed to the worms. But to get into that, we'll send you to Candace. So, well, after the food gets processed with our wood chipper, um, we'll throw it into our worm bin here. Um, this is a vermiculture flow through system. Uh, we'll layer on all of our food. We'll do a layer of cardboard as our bedding material, kind of help keep the flies down. Um, once this bin is nice and full, we can harvest almost 200 pounds of uh, fresh compost um, and it'll drop to the bottom and then we'll process or we'll put all that into our flower beds. So Candace, why, why do we run it through a wood chip? Um, so it's easier for the worms to process the food. Um, bigger chunks take a little bit longer to break down. Um, so the more sloppy and whatnot it is, uh, it's quicker to process and we can feed them a little bit more often. So. Nice. So you said once you harvest, you use it in flower beds. Yeah. What other uses are there? So we can put it in our flower beds, we can top dress our grass, um, mix it with seed when we're patching up bare spots on campus, all that sort of stuff. Nice. Um, we also use it too for our uh, compost tea. Um, that we usually apply to our turfs and flower beds too. So the other composting process we use is called thermal piles. So Tyler, can you explain a little bit about um, thermal composting and how that's different than maybe what some people might think of when they think of a compost pile? Sure. So uh, in the name thermal composting or thermal pile is thermo, so there's a heat element to it. So by uh, layering browns, which are more carbon-based materials, and greens that are more nitrogen-based, um, we're able to make this lasagna of browns and greens. And then what that does is um, makes a, a perfect living, living habitat for microorganisms to come in. So you get a lot of microbacterial, microbial activity that uh, heats up as it digests the organic material. So we can get temperatures up to 150, 160 degrees on the inside of this pile. Then when the temperature drops to about 100, um, I come in with a pitchfork, turn it over, maybe add some new material, and then the, uh, the little organisms get back to it, heating up as they digest and decompose the organic material. So our thermal pile process gets, a, gets its sourcing from many different uh, locations, both on campus and off campus. We've got here a 55 gallon pail where students in the resident halls will come and drop off their food. We also partner with local businesses, restaurants, coffee shops, getting materials from off campus to on campus to continue growing our own program, as well as creating a sort of culture with the mindset of sustainable composting and food waste reduction. So we've just learned about some amazing things happening at Whitworth University in terms of sustainability. And now we wanna talk about what each of us can do in our daily lives to make these little impacts that are gonna have big rewards for all of us. Tyler, how can people do this at home? It's actually pretty easy. The first step is just collect your food waste. You can grab a five gallon bucket like we've got here and 
Just begin collecting veggies, fruits, grains, coffee. So we've got some old bread here, some banana peels. Um, something that people aren't aware of, uh, many aren't, is that you can throw your coffee grounds and coffee filters in there as well. So begin just by collecting your food waste from the kitchen. And then you've got some options to go from there. You can build a compost pile in your backyard using um, old dried up leaves. So use some browns like that or carbon based materials. Throw your kitchen scraps or grass clippings which act as the nitrogen base and um, pile it up and let nature take its course. Another option is look into your community. So find a school like Whitworth that has a compost program. Um, community gardens will have options as well. You can also contact your city. Um, oftentimes next to the waste and recycling, you can have a curbside compost pickup. So there's really a number of easy options that people can do at home. Tying off of what Tyler said, um, a lot of what Whitworth is doing, even though it seems so large scale, um, you at home can do just as much as we're doing. Even though it's on a small level, you're still making an impact wherever you go. Um, same for your friends and family. It's a team effort. And so thanks for um, getting to know a little bit more about what we're doing um, with composting. And please um, find ways to get involved. Um, this is important work and we're excited to be doing this here at Woodworth. Thanks. Thank you.